Carroll. Who they put in there at tackle? Woo! They got to deal with it. edition of the American Fan 365 podcast. I'm your host, Josh, Will Josh Williams. Let me get my name right. But uh, excited for another episode. Excited to be here with you guys and uh, excited to uh, to have this conversation with another NBA legend. So uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get right into the show. Uh, George, how you doing today? George, the bearded one to the right. I'm doing amazing, Josh. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the intro. I, I'm riding a high. I'm riding an NC State wolf. Pack, <laughs> wolf, pack. It feel we're partying like it's 1983 today. That's Jim, what it is. Jimmy Valvano. That's the, the last time. The last time they were they were this deep in the tournament. Jimmy Valvano couldn't find anyone to hug. And and we'll we'll uh, we'll roll that clip another oh. time. But uh, but yeah, that's that's the last time. Um, NC State made it this far, man. So exciting for them. Uh, excited for that 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 school and to take out an in-state rival in Duke on the way. Um, you know, with all of uh, all of you know all the pageantry that goes with playing Duke. You know, they've got the recruiting classes and all that stuff. And you know, we got a a big hefty boy that they just cannot stop. Josh, so. he is possibly the best big man that you've seen in the last. 10 years in college basketball it, it, dare i say greg odin level of like <laughs> this kid is unstoppable in the paint well well look listen this is this is this is why i still say that big men have a place in basketball mm -hmm. you know what i mean they've been marginalized so much over the past 10 years that when a bully still shows up we don't have nothing to deal we don't have nobody can deal with him uh-uh like, they can't stop him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's on he, that kind of level. He's so physically more mature than uh, <laughs> than everybody. But the way that he manhandled Kyle Flip Flipowski or whatever the heck his last Duke, name is. Duke always has a, a Owski or Kowski or something on their team. That is, a, that is Duke law. I mean, he's a man playing with little children right now. And that's what happens when you stay in college. For more than three years, yeah, it, look. your body because his first year, I don't know. Have you seen the evolution of him? No. Okay, no, let no. me uh, let me show you because he wasn't always a, a tank. Okay, all right, fair enough, fair enough. He's he's been evolving into this, but we, we also got to introduce uh, the curled one, Joey, in the back. Joey, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm there doing it good, is. Doing you, good. you look you look good in the in the in the, in the soundproof box in the back. That's soundproof. good stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and Joey apparently is is a hooper. So, so we were talking about that before the show, Joey. Uh, so, sorry. So, what's your go-to move? What, what we got? You, you talking about you hooped last week? You were saying that Jerome was at a camp that you were a part of. So, you did let some tea leaves drop last week that I let slide <laughs> that I didn't really pay attention to. But now I hear you say that you can hoop. I'll let you go ahead and have your moment. Uh, go-to move. I don't really have a go-to. Okay. I'm. Just, I mean, it's just like art. It's just. I flow with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm really like Kyrie. Me and Kyrie got a similar games. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's just like an art form. Okay. Creative with it. <laughs> nothing nothing too crazy. Like I don't have no killer crossover go to step back. Nah. Okay. I got all that in there, but I'll just pull it out when I need to pause. You that's, know what I'm that's, saying? <laughs> that's that's in the bag, as they say. Exactly. Oh, okay, all right. So we, we finishing it but with both hands at the rim. Oh come on! Hey, all okay. that, all hey, that. Hey, hey, listen, listen. All that's, that. that's, Both hands. That's we we gonna have, we gonna hoop. I got a twenty four hour. We can, we no, can get right. no, I'm trash now, bro. You don't see how fat I am. I was I was literally talking to happy, happy Easter to everybody. It's Easter Monday. Happy Easter to everybody. I was talking to my mom yesterday at dinner, and I was like, Ma, do you realize how much we really run when we play ball? Like, and I was saying, like, one of the last times that I played, I, like, had um, my watch on, my, uh, my, my watch that's attached to my phone. And this is, like, me, fat, old, out of shape. And I did, like, eight miles in, like, probably about an hour and a half of hooping. And I was like, yo, I can't imagine when I actually could play and was really running around the court. 
I was probably doing like 15 miles a day. That's why I was so skinny. Easily. That's not coming back. No. Those days are not. Just like, like if it's going like to take that. These days for DJ Burn aren't aren't coming back. Oh, okay, here, here we go. We, you, uh... we we we've got we've got the the pull up. Oh, oh no, he was a baby. Yeah, dude. Oh, he, he went was, to Tennessee. He was a Tennessee. He was a vol. He okay. was a vol. And so what happened here is like I I don't think that he was utilized the way that he wanted to be utilized. Then he went to Winthrop. Winthrop. So Packed he's on he, some lbs. Wow, he's 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 transferred twice. He's been and then remember how I said. At least my what I'm looking for in the tournament is a team filled with just like five misfits that just came together. You did say that, that is a hundred percent what NC State is. They are five transfers that came in and are just ah oh, oh my god, they're the best team at college basketball. So, right okay, now. So, I'm so excited. So dude. wait, wait, all right. So pulling back to our March Madness preview, that was that was your that was your kind of key to Correct. to betting, right? And then mine was the coaches and. That's one of my coaches stayed. Now I didn't do well with the other two, but one of them did stay, and that's uh, that's Dan Hurley. Yeah, I, I said that UConn was probably going to repeat. So I would also he's halfway close. I would consider the Purdue coach a very he, he's in the echelon of like I've been here a lot. Good coaching. I'm still know? saying who on him? Who? I, I don't. What's what's his name? George? Who? Exactly. <laughs> 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 see how see how you was like. Uh, yeah, if you gotta do that, you don't know his name. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, uh, shit, dude. Matt. Uh, oh, dude, that's the worst one. Google only shows you half of it. Uh, uh, Matt. Uh, Matt Painter. Matt Painter. Matt yeah. Painter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who? Ma yeah. I stand by what I said. Uh, let's go around the world in sports. Let's go ahead and actually start the show up. Uh, around the world in sports. First off, walking with greatness continues. LeBron James. Is now the only the second player all time to uh, have multiple 40 plus point games joining Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, of course, had three during his time with the Wizards. LeBron now has two. Uh, he he's more than likely going to catch him. And also, he also surpassed Michael in uh, in 30 point games for a career. So, you know yeah, I mean? I mean, he's now it's just like stat padding, dude. Yeah, look, look, he really we all know what he needs to do. If he wins a title here, it is etched in history forever that there's no doubt that he is the greatest of all time. Oh, if he loses, he is just a person padding his stats. You still, you still, okay, you still have him that close, huh? All right, so let's, let, I, I didn't even, th this wasn't even supposed to devolve into this, but uh, two, two titles behind, because LeBron's got four, Jordan's got six, two MVPs behind, one defensive player of the year behind, uh, Two more Finals MVPs behind. Uh, also, remember Jordan led the league in a in a, stat, a statistical category thirteen times. LeBron's only done it twice. Like he still got a gap. There's still a gap. Like everybody that wants to just like was it all push scoring? Him forward. Uh, it was no, all scoring. No, for Michael. no, no. Statistical categories. Yes. Steals. Steals. Okay. Remember Michael? Michael was like averaging like two, three steals a game for a stretch. You know what I'm saying? Like LeBron's yeah. only he's only he has one scoring title and one assist title. That's for his entire career. So as much as you know, he might be up there in a lot of these stats, but when it comes to like who is the best Awards. that year? Yeah. Yeah. MVP's tainted, but I mean we I think we all know that that, that one's because there was years in which it was like, "Oh, we just can't give it to LeBron again." Yep. Yeah. And there probably so was there years like that with Michael? Of course. 93, they gave it to Charles Barkley. Remember, that's cool. They gave you that. I'm going to get this. Uh, and then 97, they gave it to Carl Malone. Like That one, though, like Carl Malone was playing out of his mind that year. Uh, he's still, yeah, it, 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 yeah. They gave you that. Okay. I'm going to get this. Like, okay. <laughs> I got All the right. finals. MVP. I got the MVP at the end of the season that mattered the most. Um, but, uh, you know, so, so Jordan theoretically could have eight right. MVPs. And that's where it just gets just disgusting. So right, right. Um, LeBron's I mean, got to win the title this year. He, ugh. that's it. I mean, a, a fifth title would definitely a second with LA. That would start to cement his legacy in LA because right now he's still a carpetbagger in LA. He's not really a guy that people are saying, "Oh, he's a Laker." Like Laker fans still don't feel he's a Laker. Um, so another title in LA and doing it in a non-COVID situation in a, outside of a bubble. Um, 
you can't take that one away, right? Because we can, you know, I can easily marginalize his his uh, his fourth one, um, you know. Uh, but uh, you, you win another one, can't 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 marginalize that one. I don't care if anybody gets hurt or whatnot. Mm-mm. Different. I feel it. You know what I'm saying? What else do we have around the world? Around in sports? the world in sports, baseball season has officially started. Let's briefly highlight a few of the surprises. George, the Yankees swept the Astros. Crazy. Four straight games. Um, and they did it with, with Aaron Jones. Uh, only, oh, it's Aaron Jones. Aaron Judge only hitting 125 over the four games. But Juan Soto is already on a tear, hitting 529 and having a home run already as the season started. Yeah, he's got a nice little five minute highlight package that uh, MLB made sure to post this morning. <laughs> um, just him. All right, let's see a home run here. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh just, that was just a laser. That was a laser dude, shot. That wasn't. Why even... do some players just look so good in Yankees uniforms? Everybody that has the uh, that tan complexion, the A Rod, Derek Jeter, biracial <laughs> angel type vibe, <laughs> biracial <laughs> angel. <laughs> you know, like I stole that from the other guys. Oh, uh, I'm clipping that though. Biracial oh. angel. You can't shoot Jeter. He's a biracial angel. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Juan Soto fits fits the mold perfectly. Yep, yep. Uh, uh, it's I, I didn't realize I was talking to a Yankee fan a few weeks ago. I didn't realize that they traded for him without him having a contract. So he's essentially on a one year deal with with New York. Like they only got him for a year. They gave up a lot to only have him for a year. Yeah, and he's gonna want the bag when the season's over. So. Oh, 100%. I don't Maybe. know if this is going to continue. Yeah. Oh, opposite field. My God. Get over the fence, baby. Who was that? That was Juan Soto. I thought he only had one home run. That, that was it? That oh, was it. okay. I don't the think other, the other one was The other hit run. was just a hit. Oh, just okay, a solid okay. frozen rope in the outfield. He's oh, just fired okay. up right now. Oh, okay. Watch out. I saw a lot of people, a lot of Yankee fans uh, just going crazy. Like the World Series was played. Well, It listen. is huge to start off like that, but there's a lot. Of yeah, 150, 158 more games. Uh, <laughs> we still, it's a marathon. Um, but uh, I will tell you from a Yankees perspective, a Yankees fan perspective, I know any time that they can beat the Astros and and do it dominantly, they're excited. Yeah, because that that's I would say honestly, outside of the uh, the Red Sox, that's probably their the the most vitriol that they have as a fan base towards another team right. would be the Astros. Yeah, like I can't think of Those another. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, I can't really think of another team that would that would bring that out of them. But not just them. The billion dollar team that is the the Los Angeles Dodgers. They have gone four and two. They've won both of their series. They won the series in Seoul versus the Padres, and they they just won their their second series versus the Cardinals, um, two one both times. They're at four and two. Uh, Mookie Betts is is already tearing the cover off the ball. He's he's uh, he's hitting five hundred and also has four home runs on the season. So he's first in the league in home runs already. Yeesh. Uh, and that's what Shohei Otani struggling a little bit with uh all the 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 gambling allegations uh that are floating in the in the midst you see he got uh, married too he got married without any, letting anybody know oh oh i do was that a while ago that. uh i feel like uh, it's was been that in the last the month or so there's just so much that we're learning about this guy yeah there's it's the last a, month or so he's like a fiction book <laughs> just like you whatever happens next you're not surprised you know <laughs> like they had the baby in three months like what what, yeah. what kind of genetic difference? But <laughs> Shohei Otani was born yeah in the same time span, so yeah. like he's <laughs> he's he's a, he has a baby and had a baby. Right. He's he's that guy. I got Man. you. Hitting uh, he's batting right now two sixty nine and no home runs. So as I said on also on our MLB preview, I felt like he was going to take a step back this year. Now that was before all the allegations started dropping, but I still felt like you saw he still needed a little yeah. bit more time from the you injury. saw the writing on the wall. <laughs> Apparently, you, I did. You predicted the future. <laughs> also, George mm-hmm. Kobe's dad, Joe Jellybean Bryant, officially sells his only Kobe Bryant championship ring from the 2000 year championship, the first uh, ring that Kobe got for nine hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars, the most ever uh, gained from an NBA championship ring. This is the only ring that he gave his dad because, remember, they had the unfortunate falling out uh, because of his wife. I did not remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the family, um, his mom and his dad didn't care for Vanessa. 
Because remember mm. Kobe and Vanessa, Kobe was like 20 and Vanessa was like 17, 18 and they got married. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Did not know this. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow. And, um, and, and the parents didn't really like Vanessa. And so, and then Kobe very much like my way or, or, you know, or no way. Right. And so when that happened, they kind of had uh, a little bit of a falling out as a family. Like it definitely hurt the family. For so sure. is it messed up that he sold the ring? Because like when you say that, you know, it's a memory of your son who passed away. Yeah. You made almost a million dollars. I, I'll, well, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. Well, because actually they originally sold it. I think it was like 2013 for like 127. So mm -hmm. I don't know if, because the like as the article went on, I was like, well, did he sell it or did he already sell it in 2013? Like and somebody just nine X'd his. Yeah, <laughs> and he like got That's a piece tough. or something. I don't know. But would I do this as a as a family member? Um, I'll say this. I'll say this, and I see Joey already cracking a smile in the back. It's a million dollar uh, question. I have so I have a a piece of artwork by uh, a Mr. Ernie Barnes that was given to Jerome. Um, when he first got in the league, and it was a uh, 50th anniversary when the uh, when the um, the NBA had the 50th anniversary. So this is 96, 97, and the painting, the the painter Ernie Bar Ernie, uh, I think it's Ernie Barnes. Um, he's like a famous black painter, right? Mm -hmm. My painting now is well. So basically, uh, the only reason it came into my possession was because Jerome gave it to my parents, and then when my parents moved to Vegas. They just didn't have room in the house. And so the painting literally sat in the garage. Oh, and God. so when I bought my first house, my downstairs, like I put like a man cave together and I was like actually building like sports artwork and different things. And I was like, hey, Ma, that thing's in the garage. Like, let me have that that painting. He's like, all right. After I fought, I had to fight my dad for it. And I was like, dad, it's in the garage. Like, you don't care about it. <laughs> this is going to get a showpiece front center spot in my house. And they're like, all right, they, 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 they acquiesced and they gave me the painting. So during COVID, I took a picture next to the painting and one of my friends was like, hey, I'll give you like $1,000 for that painting. I was like, dang, $1,000? I was like, wait, what? How much is this painting worth? Because they didn't even know who painted it, right? They were just like, that's a dope basketball painting. Man, I Googled the painting. My painting is worth like 600 grand. Whoa. Wait a and second. Then, and then, go ahead, Joey. You can click to your face. You can click to your face. Yeah, that was that was the face <laughs> Joey was making. Yeah. So first off, you don't know where I live. Don't ask. That's first part. Second, yeah, because Ernie Barnes died, and he has like a number of paintings that are worth big dollars, right? But that's one of his all times because the painting, I think there was only 50 made because it was for the 50th anniversary. I, it's it's signed by him in pencil, which is a big deal. Um, and uh, yeah, like it's that painting. So if I ever am in hard times. See, but Josh, that isn't like a championship ring. That's just a painting. It just so happened that you got it. You should not feel bad about that at all. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. That's different. That is that, what, what I, especially if my brother passed. Correct. Now, you could also use the other angle of my my son or brother passed and I want to I, I it's hard for me to see things like that. Right. And so you get rid of it in that way. Yeah. But me and my brother don't have a bad relationship. So to know that I still also have like something that still tethers me to them, I probably would keep it just because. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You like, know what you can do? You could just be like, hey guys, we're doing a family all inclusive vacation. You guys don't got to pay for anything. I'll buy all the flights and everything. Kindness of my heart. And then they'll be, and then once you're there, just be like, I sold the painting. This is pretty cool, huh? Like I, I sold it. We're here for a week in we, Hawaii. We right? literally had a moment as a family because of some scribbly lines. And on yeah, a piece and of you, paper. you get a moment out of it. Yeah, it's perfect. I you can live this of, moment. Uh, I can't live the painting. This is, this is Mr. Ernie Barnes right here. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see. I see Any I oh, oh, and so this. remember too, for for those in you know that are of my complexion, uh, Ernie Barnes is the that's the painting um, at the end of Good Times when everybody's like this. He's the painter that did that painting. So he was from the seventies, sixties, seventies, all the way into like the late nineties, I think early two thousands, and that's when he passed. He passed at like sixty something. Yeah, but, um, dope. yeah, he he was known for like very like 
uh, I guess, elongated um, depictions of people. Like, so black Body people parts. were very skinny and long and, you know, whatever. But, yeah. I ain't, don't show them the painting, George. They don't That's need dope. They, they don't need to know what it looked like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, get out of there. Man. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't need nobody casing casing me leaving the studio. That's yeah, no, that's crazy. Good on, <laughs> yeah, good for you. Yeah. So, but yeah, it happens. So, would I sell it? If if time, trust me, there's been some dark moments in the last couple of years where I'm like. Ernie might gotta go. <laughs> we, we we might need to make some decisions. Oh. But uh, last thing in around the world in sports, don't look now. But the Mavs, the Dallas Mavericks are hot, winners of seven straight and just knocking off the eleven straight win Houston Rockets. Uh, currently sitting in fifth and matched up with the Los Angeles Clippers. Could the Mavs make a run? I actually go to Joey. Joey, do, what do you think? Can the and bring the mic down past your face? It's it's all up in your in your neck. There, oh, bad. I'm a little short. There, but <laughs> there no, nah, the Mavs for sure can. You think so? Yeah, they have the talent. I mean, getting Gafford and PJ Washington, they got some more athleticism in the front court. Mm. And ever since they've had Daniel Gafford, they've like every game that he started, I saw a stat. They've maybe lost like twice. They're like 14 and two or something with him. Mm, former Wizard. Yeah. Yeah. And he was always tough on the Wizards. Like he double, always double. played well. Double double. And he's okay. Certain bigs are okay doing their job, which is I'm going to get 10 rebounds and give me an Uber to a game and I'll play good defense. That's all I need. I don't need much drone. He didn't need much more than that. You give him a oop and you know and 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 hit him when he's in, you know in, like he's playing with point guards that'll actually make a pass on time. So that makes him look even better. Now that makes him even more dangerous. He's more engaged. You become a just a decent NBA player to like man Daniel Gafford. He's looking great. No, he's got. He's got some people that will actually give him the ball on time. And as a big, that's a big thing, man. Like when you're open and somebody misses you or you just have a point guard that's selfish or can't make that pass, mm -hmm. you're not getting back on defense the same. I'm going to just let you know right now. So seeing I, – I forgot that he did go there. So that is actually interesting. They're deep. Yeah. They're like – their roster looks pretty legit. And it's got uh, playoff acumen to go with it Everywhere. too. Like, yeah. Yeah. Including Grant Williams. Uh, That's right. That's, That's right. They do have Grant Williams. Good now. little. No, he got player. traded. He's mm -hmm. in Charlotte now. You're right. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. You're then right. Why, then why the? F Hold on. Grant Williams for PJ Washington. ESPN. You're making me look stupid as shit right now. <laughs> He's on the Dallas Mavericks roster now. He does have an asterisk next to his name, but usually <laughs> that means good things. That means he's gone. <laughs> ah, midseason. He's trade. probably still getting paid by them. That's why. That, yeah. Maybe so. You're right. Uh, yeah. You're right. Uh, good. Good. Yeah. The Mavericks are still on the hook for him. Maybe that if you're still paying a player, you can just call him for advice. Uh, or, or you know, maybe you know? he's just still a part of the roster, and the Charlotte Hornets ain't going nowhere. It's like, hey, come on back. Hey, we actually still got your condo. Yeah, <laughs> we still got your condo. Just... Can you imagine if the NBA worked like that? Like, That's actually like dope. just pick up basketball. <laughs> like just people are signing one day contracts left and right. We still own your rights. So uh, <laughs> technically. If you don't make it, you 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 have first right or like like uh, Eric Bieniemy, like first right refusal. You can come home. You know, right, if, if anything right. happens, just come home. But mm, uh, the future of basketball, <laughs> we just unveiled it. <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, that's going to be a tough out for the Clippers. I'll say that. Whew. If that's the matchup, it's going that's seven. some fireworks for the first round. My goodness, mm. um, because like, okay, who does Kyrie guard? Okay, you guarding James Harden, you guarding Russell Westbrook, like who's you know who's trying to stop Kawhi? But then on the other side, who's going to slow down Luca? I, and I and I feel Nobody. like I feel well, and you're right, and I feel like the Mavericks actually have beaten the Clippers a lot this year. I need to look that up, but from the top of my head, I feel like they've beaten them a few times. So that's going to be that's going to be an interesting series for sure. But uh, without further ado, let's 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 switch it over to March Madness. That means we're getting a little bit closer to our interview with with uh, our our good friend Mike Bibby. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and text him now. Uh, George, go ahead and yes. fill this dead air. <laughs> so just uh, fact checking here, since I also looked uh, stupid a couple of seconds ago, the Mavericks are one and two versus the Clippers this season. Were they close games is the question. Okay. I think the Mavericks – okay, so the Mavericks put up 144 points mm -hmm. in their first meeting with them. So the Mavericks beat them 144 to 126. The second game, the Mavericks lost 88 to 107. And in the third game, the Mavericks lost 120 to 111. 
Did okay. they have Kyrie for those two those yes. two games? Because Kyrie missed a good portion. That's another yeah. question. And so, after the trade as well. So what is uh, Joey? Maybe you can help me fill in. What Kyrie are we getting at this moment in time? Which evolution? That- right now we're getting the vet Kyrie. I feel like he's mm-hmm. very. There's been no outside distractions. He's moving the ball well. I mean, he always has been a good passer, just whether he wanted to or not. But he's been passing well to Luca. He's averaging probably, I think, close to like seven assists. He had seven the other night. Yeah. I think he has no problem giving it to Luca because Luca's really like that. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I think he. I mean, I think he thought LeBron was nice, but he was like, I can get a bucket quicker than LeBron. Luca. In more different ways. Yeah. Luca can do everything, and nobody really can stop him. So I think he has a different respect for him, and Luca has that same respect for him too. Like you see Kyrie making these plays, and he's all happy. LeBron. Might look at him a little weird if he shot that game winner that he wanted to take or mm-hmm. whatever, you know. No, like. that's that's fair. And and uh, and, and honestly, uh, what version of Kyrie is this? I feel like you said this is the veteran Kyrie that's willing to do what it takes. So if doing what it takes for us to win is only getting 20, 22, and seven or eight assists, and and uh, you know and moving the ball well and and making tough shots in big moments. Um, I think that that's still a very dangerous and deadly Kyrie because the other Kyrie was he had to dribble and over dribble and do 75 moves. And so now I'm exhausted on defense and I have nothing left to give you on the other side of the ball. Um, right. I, I think that, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting because I did forget about Daniel Gafford and then also P.J. Washington. Shout out to Finley Prep in Las Vegas uh, that I used to coach at. Uh, P.J. Washington. I did not know you used to coach at Finley. Yeah, I used to coach at Finley I used to watch too. the season on YouTube. You know, they had the yeah, dog. I, yeah. I was seeing every episode of that. Oh, okay. That, yep. that was before. That was after me. I, okay, uh, okay. We we was we we wasn't that sexy. You guys were the pioneers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was there. I was there with the Anthony Bennett. Anthony Bennett Day. Oh wow. And uh, and and Kelly, Kelly Oubre yep. and Rashad Vaughn mm. and and, uh, and um, Jonah Bolden and all those guys. Oh that wow. Was, that was when I was there. Yeah. So I was there for three years. Three years. Damn. Three years. Yeah. And they're not. They're no longer around anymore, right? No, 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 yep. no. Mister Mister Finley shut it down. He wasn't getting enough recruits. It was. Yeah. It was for UNLV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's all it was for. Yeah. It wasn't. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you later more about that on oh. uh, off air. Do we have uh, a wait? Hold on, Josh. Would you ever be down to do like a deep dive American fan episode? Finley what? prep, like a documentary. Perhaps I'd have to get some guys involved. Though. The dark side of I, Finley prep. Oh, uh, there's not really much dark side, but I'd, I'd have to get. I'd, I would have to get some of the former players. Like I'd have to get um, uh, Nigel Williams, Goss, you know, on it. <sighs> Um, yeah, so I coached Nige. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. I've known Nige since Nige was like 12. Man. Because he lived out here for a moment. Um, so I coached, uh, do you know Noah Tate's? But yeah, is that the white that, kid that went to the Gorman? Went to Gorman? Yeah, yeah. The I was white, his, yeah. I was his first coach. Oh shoot, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I saw, and he was that child was touched from the beginning, and his dad is like six five, and it was he was real short, and I was like, man, his mom wasn't tall. Mom was like five five. So I was like, if he grows. Cause he could he could shoot it like fifth grade. It was crazy. But yep, yep, yep. That's wild. Uh, let's see. Mike says he's on, so uh, I'll go ahead. We can we can actually switch this around and, and jump around to Mr. Mike Bibby. Uh, let's see here. Uh, before before we jump into Mike, I'll say our March Madness segment today is brought to you by our friends at Coco Love, the beverage of choice of the American Fan 365. Head over to www.cocolovewater.com for your own case of coconut refreshment and use the code TAF365 for your discount on Hawaiian Beach Vibes. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and jump right into this conversation with my man Mike Bibby. Uh, Mike is uh, before before I bring him in. Mike is one of the the greatest point guards of all time. Um, huge, huge, huge NBA legend during his time with the uh, Sacramento Kings. Uh, started off, of course, with the the, uh, uh, the not the Memphis Grizzlies, but the Vancouver Grizzlies, and um, you know. Was was a part of that Sacramento that that last great Sacramento run when they were making deep playoff runs, but before that he was the starting point guard at the University of Arizona. My guy, Mike Bibby. Mike, how you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Just leaving the gym. Yep, yep. Getting ready for some daddy duties right now. Yo, yo, and uh, and you and you were saying that uh, that you're you're creating a podcast of your own in, in inside the crib. Yeah, we could do, we're doing the podcast at the house. Me, Eddie House, Ty Ellis. Um, so it should be coming out soon. We 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 filmed some shows. 
So, you know, it's just something we're working on. Just try to, you know, get out there and get get us out there a little bit. So. I love it. I love it. As I told you, man, on the phone, bro, you got to, you know, listen, you, you have one of the greatest minds of all time um, from a point guard standpoint. You know, when we talk about your dad and your mom and just your lineage in the in the game. Get into it, man. Get into that stuff that people aren't talking about, man. Like, talk about, you know, the, the X's and O's of the game and, and you know, what makes a good player. And, you know, because uh, I still think a lot of that stuff, man, fans really don't understand, truthfully. As we See, look my, at thing is, my thing is I want to be able to coach. I want to be able to give back to these kids, you know, I mean, any level, college, NBA, just so I could give some of that knowledge back to them and teach them and, and just – See, like, I mean, that I could just kind of, like, watch and, and, and go off. You know what I mean? Just go there and watch, and I could tell you what you're doing. Like, I take pride in that, just teaching kids and just making kids better, like little things like footwork and just try to have your feet ready before you before you catch the ball to shoot. And little stuff like that it means a lot to the kids because a lot of these kids ain't getting taught anything nowadays. That's right. That's right. A thousand percent. AU, man, AU, I feel like, has ruined the game more than anything else. Truthfully, is ruin and help it at the same time is weird. I have a, I have a I weird. I mean, it's. I mean, it's like everything, you know. Like, I mean, I I know a lot of coaches and just some of the feedback I get some from the guys, not just from the coaches, just from guys that are around coaches and stuff, and just like they, I don't know if they care not care about the kids, but don't know how long they're gonna have them, or and mm -hmm. just figure like I'm just gonna, you know, shoot shoot it and just let them go out and play. Like these kids need to learn going to the next level. I was um. You know, I, I coached the high school for six six years, and I mean, we we ran that high school like a like an NBA program, college program. You know, we had we had um, study hall. You know, if your grades weren't up to par, you had to be in study hall before practice. Yep. Uh, we had shoot arounds. We had walkthroughs. We had film. We had uh, one on one learning, just working and getting better and shot. Like I, I mean, I I'm not I'm never pull you out for making a mistake like if i even if you can't shoot and you're i'm your coach and i see you working on it i have no problem with you taking the shot if you can't shoot and you're not coming against that extra work <laughs> we're gonna have a problem shooting jump shots that's it you know what i mean so i i was at a um i was in a i went to a few training camps one year and i'm not gonna name the team just um i just went there and, and was watching you know i mean I came in as you know just watching you know, one of the coaches and my thing was, you know, they're learning stuff. They're learning how to X out of a, a double team. And, and I went to the coach and I was like, I'm teaching my high school this. These guys don't know this. They're like, mm. mm -mm, no one teaches it to them. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I'm thinking like, dang, this NBA players, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's just sad to see that no one's, no one's teaching these guys. Speak on it, Mike. Speak on it. Well, before we get too deep in the NBA, I did want to start with uh, just talking about your college career a little bit at Arizona. Arizona had a good, another good run this year in the tournament. But um, you went in the national title as a freshman, a freshman point guard, which was completely unheard of at the time. What was that experience like for you? And um, as you, you know, is there something that you could tell the kids that are now in the Final Four this year? I mean, it just, just. Take advantage of it, you know. I mean, put the egos aside, play for each other, play to win. You know, what I mean, you might not ever get this chance again. You know, it might be it, some guys. It might be the last time they ever play basketball. Yes. You know, what I mean? so just take advantage of it. It's a fun time. It's in, it's in Phoenix this year, so I'll be there, and just go out there and have fun, play your game, and just and just you can't be afraid to fail. Yeah, yeah, a thousand percent. Um, and uh, listen, we can't talk about. Arizona and, and your your final four run without talking about, you know, the, the foam posits, without talking about the foams. You know, I had Jerome on last week for March Madness talking about the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, and, um, you know, AI and the and the Hoyas, they were the original team that played in the, in the Concords and the 11s. And um, uh. with you being the original player playing in the foam posits, what is that, you know, you're forever linked to that. What is that like for you? And um, how did you perform in them heavy shoes? I got to ask that question, too. I have no idea because I, I, I've seen them. I, 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 but at an at a 18-year-old kid, you can play in anything. 
they put you, give you boots to play on. You're playing boots. So, uh, like I mean, back then it was it's different than it is now. Cause back then, you know, if your uniforms were red and navy, that's what kind of shoes you had: white, red, navy. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you played in shoes that was your team color. That's what everybody did. Yeah. And I remember the the Nike guy Eric Lautenbach came in, and shout out to Eric. Um, he came in and he was like, "Hey," he sat the whole team down. I was like, "Hey, I got a, I got a pair of shoes. It's not your team colors." Um, you guys, I got a pair for everybody. If you guys want to wear it, you can wear it. It's not out yet. So as soon as he said it's not out yet, I don't care what they could be. I don't care what color. They could be pink or yellow. <laughs> I'm wearing them. They're not out yet. And so, I mean, just being tied to that, it's just good. And now that put me in the, you know, the shoe category, being a consort of shoes. And, you know, I mean, I just, I'm a collector of shoes now. I've always never really had the money to get the shoes that I've always wanted. But, you know, being in my first year of brand Jordan and be able to get the shoe, best shoe available out, um, best shoe brand out, you know, it, it's just top notch. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, w- without without saying too much, I, I will tell you, anytime I see Mike, he always has fire on his feet. It's without fail. Without fail. So uh, you, you, That's you, the Jordan you... people. Shout out to the Jordan people. <laughs> are still taking care of me, man. And, you know, it's a great brand. And I mean, it's the, it's the best you know, the best player to ever play the game shoes. That's it. That's it. Simple and plain. Um, now, before we get into your NBA career, Mike, uh, what's something, you know, before you got drafted, what's something that you would have wished you told that someone would have told you, or you'd be able to tell yourself at 20 years old going into the draft process and what your career was going to be like? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that. Cause I mean, I took it serious. I came out, um, and I was, I took it serious. You know, it was a lifestyle, it was a dream that I wanted to reach in mind and get in there. You know, it was a dream come true. I was very blessed. Um, thank God. And I mean, just the situation I put in, I always put myself in the best situation to make sure I was successful. I you know I worked hard. I worked harder when I got in the NBA than before. And, you know, it was just the fact that I wanted to stay there. I wanted to put a, in, my imprint on the game and just, you know, I never made any all-stars games but I felt like I my, I had a pretty good career and you know looking back and you know a lot of people don't last long. I played 14 years um but I was just happy to be a part of a team you know I still just you know the camaraderie that you get with guys the friendship that you make with guys with their families and um kids and stuff you know seeing all these kids growing up now you know seeing when they're babies it's just a different look man I'm just, I'm just happy to be there and being able to be blessed to be drafted yeah yeah first off shout out to mike bibby for being live on the line with us uh make sure you like share and subscribe this video right now smash that like button right now uh but as we get back into it getting drafted number two to vancouver mike um what was your initial welcome to the nba moment what what can you remember where it was like dang this is different what what was what was that moment like for you that that rookie season it was uh, my first preseason game. You know, Lee Mayberry was the starting point guard, and he had gotten hurt. And I think he either broke his hand or broke his foot or something. And I was kind of, they were kind of going to bring me along slow. Um, I don't know why, but uh, that's, what, <laughs> that's, what, that's what their plan was. And he and her, so I was the next point guard in line. And so I remember going against um, the first preseason game we had it was the Portland Trailblazers. And I was like, damn, this is going to be every night. We got Damon Stoudemire, Air, Scotty Pippen, um, Rasheed Wallace, Sabonis. I mean, we got everybody at six, seven and above. And they just, they trapped the shit out of me from <laughs> the start. And I remember my brother was like, damn, I was looking out there. I felt bad for you because it looked like you saw a ghost. You were just like, damn. And that, that was my welcome to the NBA moment, just playing against those guys. You know, a lot of Hall of Famers out there. and just, Yeah. You know, just seeing, just having that first game be that, just getting trapped everywhere. <laughs> now, now I've asked Jason this question um, in the past. What was it like going to SAC, uh, leaving leaving uh, Vancouver and going to an organization that was ready to ascend? Um, what was it like replacing him in Sacramento when you first got there? So, I mean, it all started out. I mean, there, you know, rest in peace, Michael Heisley, the owner of the team. You know, he came to me, and and I respect him to this day for that. You know, a lot of guys don't get that respect that he gave me. And, 
he came in and he was like, hey, we're thinking about moving the team. We're probably going to move the team and we're probably going to start over. So, you know, give me like a destination. Give me five destinations that you would like to go. Mm. And in in Sacramento, I put Sacramento, Phoenix, because I'm from Phoenix, just some of the good teams that were at at the time I wanted to go play. And and he's like, well, where's your number one? Where's your number one destination you would like to go? And I told him Sacramento. And the reason for that was, you know, being in Vancouver, we didn't win many games. And, you know, like when you go to these other cities, the game wouldn't be sold out. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, just, you know, playing the whole year. And then our last game of the season, I remember going to Sacramento. And I remember coming out and it was, it was mad. It was packed. Yeah. Like, it wasn't an open seat. And I told myself, like, I would love to play in an environment like this with these fans Wow! every night. And that's why I had picked Sacramento. And of course, the way they play was always fun. And, and the thing which made it easier for me is that the fans, like I coming in, I, that, that's the one thing I worried about. How will the fans take me and how would the team take me from, from losing, um, for replacing, you know, a fan favorite, um, a great player in Jason Williams. And I didn't know what I, how I was going to be taken. And yeah. and coming in, the fans acted like I had been there forever. And what made it so easy for me to play is that the guys accepted me like I had been there for. That was the most. It was the easiest transition that I've ever had in my life in any type of category you could think. Mm. Um, and it was just like, okay, I belong here, and they think I belong. They know I belong here, so they made it so easy for me. And just going there and it was just, it was just easy. My agent told me like, Hey, the team's established already. You don't need to come in there and try to prove anything. Yeah. Just go out there and fit in and then things will take care of itself. And, and so and they did. <laughs> yeah. That's what happened. You know, I came, I think I averaged like 13 points during the season. Um, had the best season in the, I won more games in Sacramento my first year than I won in three in Vancouver. Mm, combined. So, I Jeez. mean, so just going there and just, I mean, I I felt that it was, it was happening with 61 and 21. We had the best record in the NBA um, and just going in the playoffs against, I mean, it was my first playoffs ever. And then going in playing against Hall of Famer and John Stockton, I think got me ready for the rest of the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, Mike, your your dad, your dad, NBA former NBA coach, and then your mom were were heavily involved in your your basketball upbringing. Was the NBA always the way for you? Did you feel, or were you were you good in other things as well growing up? Um, I played football. I played baseball growing up. Um, but once I got to high school, I and mean, I played, you know, I I didn't play football, but. Like halfway through the season, everybody was playing. All my friends were playing. So like, I want to play football. Baseball was just too slow for me. After I got done with baseball, I said, I'm cool on baseball. <laughs> but um, I played football, went to my freshman year, landed on my neck, and I said, that was it. I'm not playing football anymore. And I just stuck with basketball. And it was like, um, you know, I really didn't think about the NBA when I was in high school. I just wanted to get recruited. Yeah. You know, I mean, my thing was like once these schools start coming in, I think I'm, I, I was like very down to earth kid, and I was just like, "Damn, all these schools want me." I mean, like, I'm surprised. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah. so that kind of doing that and getting to college—that was my goal to get to college. And then after that, I was like, "Okay, I think I have—I could have a chance to make it to the league." You know, we went end up winning the championship my freshman year. And people wanted me to come out my freshman year, and I I wasn't ready. Just mm. mentally, physically, I knew I wasn't ready. So I, you know, I stayed one more year, worked my butt off, you know, to um to even get better. End up winning Player of the Year of the Pac ten at that time, mm. and just I felt like I felt like I was ready after that year, and I just it was time for me to go. And I talked to Coach Olson, and. And he didn't hold me back. He's like, "Yeah, I think you, I think you're ready." And so it was. It the decision was that that was that quick and that easy. Yeah, yeah. Now I, I wasn't gonna ask you this, but you did bring up the uh, 61 and, and 21 season where you guys were the number one seed, and it, and it triggered we in were my the mind. Be, we were the best team in the NBA in the, in the whole league. And yes. uh, so 
do you look back at that season, you know, now that we know what we know, you know, in terms of like Tim Donaghy and all that stuff, do you feel cheated by any way by what took place versus the Lakers? Of course. I mean, everybody saw the game. Um, but, you know, we had there was game seven. We kind of, you know, shit the bed in game seven. But that just shows you how much of a better team we were than them at that time. Because, I mean, we shoot two for 13 from the three-pointer, under 50% from the free throw line, we go to overtime. So that just shows you how much a better team we are. We could have the bad that bad of game and still have a chance to win it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you could like I. I mean, I remember looking back. You look back at the tapes. You could see, you could see defeat on their faces. Like they knew it was time. You know what I mean? And just yeah. you know, it didn't happen. But I mean, you could always say what if, what if. But you know, I man, I think that was our championship. I think that was our championship. I think. After that, I think we got kind of broken up too prematurely. Mm. You know, I mean, you never know what could happen. We win that championship, you never have a chance to run the back. We're, you know, defending champions. And it could it could be a whole different a whole different route. For sure, for sure. And and I I'll get you out of here on this one, Mike. Um now now most dudes, once they retire from the league, they either get fat or as Jerome, he was always a skinny man, he's reverted back to being skinny. You've gotten <laughs> yoked. So you you just left the gym. Um, how often are I you? Got, what, what? I got there at six. <laughs> and I you're just, just left at eleven. <laughs> what so, what yeah. is what is a workout with Mike Bibby look like? It's long, man. It's long. I just you know I take some of the stuff that from playing days I had and just add them up. But I'm the type of person like I love to lift. Um, I sat there, you know. I figured like, okay, I did this. Okay, well, okay, let me do this. Let me throw this in. Oh, let me throw this in. I just keep throwing shit in. And then I'm the type of person I don't like to leave anything out. So once I throw it in, it's stuck with me. So I just keep adding and it just stays with me. There it is. There it is. Well, well, shout out to Mike Bibby. Thank you so much, Mike, for taking the time, man. Talking about March Madness, talk a little bit about your career. Uh I I'll see I'll see you soon, man. We we gotta we gotta link up here in Vegas sometime soon. So next time you're in the area, just let me know. All right. All right, let me know, man. Thanks for having me on. Yes, sir. I'll talk to you. Thanks, Mike. All right, yep. Yeah. Take care. Shout out to Mike Bibby. You know, listen, my phone is powerful. I, I'm going to let you know that right now. Hey, I, I'm going I'm to start, start <laughs> calling in these favors. <laughs> we we got to get these numbers up, George. Yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, man, shout out to Mike Bibby, NBA legend. Um, excited to to just get his take on different different parts of his career and what's going on now. But uh, imagine what, what if he think? never got slammed on his neck. This man would have <laughs> been a killer safety, like just just un because he seemed he played basketball like he was fearless. I can only imagine what he would do if he saw a running back like running up the a gap and he had like a ten yard head of speed. <laughs> like he would just flatten people. Um, no, that's it's crazy, dude. It, these are the players, Josh. Were like, I mean, I don't know. You were you were in your twenties when he was gone, right? Like, no, 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 no. Mike Bibby, when, that was that was in high. You're middle in high school, school, middle school, middle school, high school? school. Okay. When when he got to Sacramento, I was in high school going into college. Right, right. Yeah. So like, I got a chance to you know play him and and all the early video games, and you always would just see him, and you'd be like, man, this this dude is a baller the headband always looked amazing on him <laughs> um and yeah when when you said you we were going to have him on today it was just kind of like a flashback into the past for me because one of the most underrated point guards for in, sure in nba history I, and and i forget that uh that he didn't he, he mentioned he didn't have any all-star appearances like dang that's right but i'm trying to think of uh, it'll probably come to me after we get off air but just like who are the point guards in the west at that point because like at that point you're thinking um, Steve Nash. Yep. So Steve Nash is starter, but then like who are the point guards on the bench um, from that time period? And I'm I'm blanking on some of the other like big name ones at that moment. But um, yeah, I mean, listen, NBA legend, man. Like Mike Bibby's still out here getting a check. So Thanks. shout out to Mike for being on the team on on, on the show today. But uh, George, mm -hmm. the Final Four is set in the men, mm -hmm. and the Elite Eight is set in the women's, and. Uh, uh, let's play a game of uh, who's the best player on each team. And um, I'm going to just say the team, and you tell me who the best player is. If you know their name, don't look it up. All right, I'm not. I'm not. All right. Hands are off the computer. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because trust me, I don't know. So uh, we'll start with NC State. 
DJ Burns Jr. Yep, yep. That, that's the big boy. I, I saw him play yesterday. I was very, very excited that they were able to feature a big. They struggled getting him the ball in the beginning, but I, I went to sleep, came back, and I looked up, and they were up. And I was like, oh, all right. Well, you got 20? Oh, okay. Keep going, big fella. He was trying to cut down the nets early yeah, just he, by the way he was just hitting the bottom of it all night. Who, who's, the best player, night. Who, who's the best player on Purdue? Zach Eady. That's – dude, right. seven feet tall. He's been playing for like four years. He had like a moment with his mom, um, and this is how I know NC State is about to annihilate them. It was just kind of like a – he was giving her a hug in the in the kiss like job was finished. And <laughs> you know what I say on this show. Job's not finished. Job not finished. Job's not finished. Job's not finished. Job's not finished. Job's he not he finished. Had, oh, mom, I love you. Though. Can you believe me that? <laughs> job not finished. Job not finished. You never what's, see Kobe do what, shit like that. What, what's, there, what's there to be happy about? <laughs> Job finished? Job Job's not finished. Um, all right. Who's the best player on on uh, Alabama? Uh, last name is Spears. He's like six foot one, okay. three point specialist. Okay, doing doing better than me because best believe, but I, I didn't I didn't Google it and it's all blank on this side. So I was just trying to see where you're at. Yeah. All right. Who who's the best player on UConn? <sighs> the national champions. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they have such an issue. Dan Hurley's their best player. Dan, I, Dan yeah, Hurley. Dan Hurley. I, is I, I the best was. I, I at least knew their coach's name. I was like, "Well, that's Dan Hurley." All right, cool. We'll move on. All right, now let's go ahead and flip the flip the script to uh, women. Oh, don't do this, y'all. LSU. Who's the best player? Angel. Reese. Angel Reese. Who's the coach? Oh my. Uh, Kim. Kim. Uh, that's yep. Kim Munch Munch M- Mulkey Mulkey. I was but you had Munchkin. Kim. You had Kim. Kim so Munchkin. We'll we'll move it along. Yep. Uh, Iowa. Caitlin Kait- Clark. Caitlin Clark. Okay. We don't know the coach's name. No. It's, he, he doesn't. He doesn't matter. <laughs> or she doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, UConn. Page. Buckers. 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 Bukers. Bukers. I, I never know how to say her last name. But it's all right. But Page. Page Buckets. Pa- pa- Page Buckets. Pagey Buckets. Who's the coach? Gino Oriyama. That's the coach. He's and still doing it. Yes, sir. Still out there. That's crazy. Uh, USC, Juju Watkins. You see her in the commercials. Yep. Yeah. And then also, uh, they also have um, Vegas's own Aaliyah. I'm trying to blank on her name. I'm blanking on her last name, but I actually coached her, which is weirder. Damn. Yeah, but her last, but Aaliyah, Aaliyah that uh, that was um, that was shot multiple times going into college. And so her freshman year, she was like on the mend after she got shot at a house party here in Vegas. Like she got shot like eight or nine times. Woof. Yeah, yeah. I think I was, remember hearing about that. That was that was her freshman year. There was it was hmm. um it was I want to say it was going into graduation and everything. It was either graduation or summertime. Mm. But yeah. Oregon State, I have no idea. No clue. Uh South Carolina. Uh no clue. No, really? Camilla Car- Cardoso, the um the big that was crying in the last game. You know her if you see her. She's gotcha. and then I want to say she's Hawaiian or her family came to like Watch her play. They'd never seen her play. For sure. But she's cold. Their coach is cold. Who's the coach? Don't know the name, but she's a boss. Don Staley. She's a boss. Hall of Famer. (laughs) Yeah. She's tough. (laughs) One of the the greatest uh, female players of all time, Don Staley. Uh, And then NC State, Texas, I have no idea. But I say all that to say we know more about the women than we do about the men. At least I did. Off, Off break. I know we've said this before on the show. The um, tournament, okay, regular season, I 100% was with you. We had discussed it. Yeah. But now in the – once you get to, like, the big dance, mm. men's basketball takes over. And I don't know if it's just they, they play on different days or – what channel is it on? Is it Are they on oh, no, ESPN? They're, they're, it's ESPN. They're, they're not on Oxygen for college. Well, I know, but, like <laughs> – they're, they're pulling numbers in college. <laughs> we all know that CBS is the – I think that is the mm. highest echelon. Wherever you play the Super Bowl on, that's that's I didn't, where it's, I didn't I didn't think of it that way in terms of CBS and Fox Sports and Fox. Well, the, it's um, just CBS ESPN. and True TV. Well, I mean True TV. I mean, who gives a shit? TNT. Um, TNT's. Big. But yeah, no. Now it is CBS, and then all the different coverages and apps. Like you can watch all the games on your phone and all that stuff yeah. during the tournament. Um, yeah, I mean, no, it you're right. It is, good, it is. It is. It is on ESPN. Um, but what I will say, so look at look at it this way: the Elite Eight, LSU versus Iowa. So that's Angel Reese versus Caitlin Clark. We already know that. Um, UConn versus USC. So that's Page versus Juju. 
Like all their heavy hitters, they get there. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the men's, we got to learn new people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, shoot, who's this guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like, like a Mike Bibby. A Mike Bibby comes out of, not I wouldn't say obscurity, but like oh, yeah. Arizona may or may not have been the, the dominant favorite going into that tournament. But then Mike Bibby becomes the guy where you're like, oh, man, you seen that Bibby kid? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that happens more, I feel like, in um, men's college basketball. Women's, like those girls, she was she was the chick from the beginning to the end for the most part. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like right. Angel Reese is like it was news when she got suspended to start the season or was asked to step down from the team for a moment. <laughs> right. We don't know what happened, but you know what I mean? Just little stuff like that. So it was interesting. Uh, I'll quickly close out the show on Jersey Jam. We've hit the Elite Eight, George. So the Elite Eight, George will not be a part of, sadly. He was close. He was three votes shy. I was. He was within the margin of, uh, of error of the of the voting. But uh, at least I lost to a jersey that your brother was featured in, and it was also a teal jersey because I teal versus teal, teal, really teal versus teal. It's a tough matchup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, 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 and lost by three. But uh, so first up, John Vu is 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 continuing his dominance year after year. John Vu elite eight matchup versus uh, Gabe Hutchinson. So that's Vince Carter versus Sean Kemp. We got John Orlando. So now is the time where I start voting against John because I can't afford the, 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 the Bulls cursive Michael Jordan jersey sign. That jersey is at cheapest 15 racks. It sounds like you're going to have to, to oh, no. look at that oh. painting. Oh, no. Oh. You're going to have to look at that painting. <laughs> i got to make this happen. <laughs> That's actually not bad. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not cracking out the painting for, 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 for John Orlando. For I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that right now. That, that painting's getting cracked for a house. We're going to live in the painting, and I'm going to buy another one. Like, see, baby, this this painting was purchased by this this, this painting right here. Uh, Dude. This artist, he paid for this house. The whole thing. It's, uh, but uh, it's but John crazy. Orlando versus Fox Taylor, so that's Bulls versus Bulls. We got Cursive Rookie Jordan versus Pinstripe Dennis Rodman and Jordan in 96. That's going to be... That's going to be a fight. Yeah, it is. That one's going to be a fight. Um, uh, up next, we got the Retro Redo Jordan All-Star Game 2003. Uh, that's Will Lyons versus uh, one of, another one of my former players, Jordan Montz, with the AI Royal Blue. I don't know how he's won a couple of these matchups. He took down Powder Blue uh, LaDainian Tomlinson. That was... Nick. Yeah, that was that was unexpected. <sighs> I didn't see that happen. Mm -mm. Uh, and no then, football jerseys. Nope, football didn't make it. Damn, didn't make it. Not one. Not one made it to the elite eight or the final four. That's that's interesting because there were some heaters in there. Yeah, I got to tell people next year. Yeah, yeah. A lot of first round outs. Looks like a Mountain West conference of jerseys. <laughs> Just a lot of a lot of early outs. <laughs> Empty promises. Oh, and finally we got my niece Gabby J in the junkyard dog teal pistons versus Coach Hollins, who continues to take out. Freaking influencers uh, with the heat white hot jersey. Oh, so that one, that one is uh, he's he's been he's been game. He's been getting like, I swear, he's got an inner city vote that comes through like with all with all districts reporting. I'm like, how the heck did he come through? He was down 15 votes. Yeah, yeah. Now he's up 10. Like, dang, I can't even help. Good luck out there, everybody. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. So. So shout out to everybody in the Elite Eight. Shout out to everybody that's in the Jersey Jam. Thank you guys so much for participating and pushing it and, and getting your friends in. We're almost up to 900 uh, followers. So on Instagram, uh, we you know we got we're we're up to thousand some places. So we're we're getting there, George. Yes. We're getting there slow yes. and steady. It's a it's a slow and steady grind. Still gotta get to a thousand subs on it on YouTube. So I gotta do better on there. But um, thank you guys, each of you, for watching today's show. Um, please make sure you like, share, subscribe. Thank you again to our, our beautiful sponsor, Coco Love. And, uh, and George, mm -hmm. I've been nice all the time. Y'all just finding out. So I'll see you guys next time.